Today I'm working in Plant 3D 2015 and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks about how you can manipulate your grid and use isolate objects and take advantage of these things when adding your structural steel. Now the first thing you'll notice here is I've got my uh, concrete and my grid already in the drawing. The top of the concrete is the bottom of the grid. Now when I'm adding footings the footings also work off the top when they insert. And so if I try to put them on the end of the, those endpoints of the grid, it's going to be inside the concrete. I'm going to have to move them up. So I want to get them at the right level. One of the first settings I do want to point out here is my O snaps are set to endpoint. Now the reason I have my O snaps set to endpoint is because everywhere there's an intersection on that grid, that's an endpoint. So it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, to work off it that way. So I'm going to first select the concrete, right click, isolate and hide the objects. So I don't have to deal with any of the endpoints on that concrete getting in the way. Next, I don't want my steel of my columns going through the footing either. So I'm going to manipulate this structure. Now also I just want to draw on that column row 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my row values do a control C and copy those to the clipboard. I'm going to change that to just zero, so I'm just getting row one that way. And so that my steel and footings will be one foot above that concrete, I'm going to change my platform value to 12 inches. Select OK. Now I don't have all those lines in the background of the grid in my way, and it's going to make it real easy to place my member. Now if I look at the settings for the member, I'm using a W14 by 120. I'm going to use a different size on some of the columns, but I can change columns globally. So instead of going back and forth changing the columns, I'm just going to draw them all the same size and then go back when I'm done and change the columns I want to a different size. So I'm going to select OK, and I'm going to draw this first one in, hit Enter. Now to place the next columns, instead of going back to member and clicking it over and over again, I can utilize AutoCAD's repeat command by just hitting enter and I'm right back drawing the members. So I can go through here and just go from one to the other until I get the layout the way I want it. This is going to be an L-shaped. and I've got that in there the way I want it now. So now I'm ready to place my footings because this bottom Line, line of the grid, and you remember we raised 12 inches, so those were drawn 12 inches above the concrete that way. And I'm going to change here to my footings layer. We'll go over here to footing, and I'm going to the settings of it. For the big column sizes, they're going to be 20 inch by 12, 20, 20 by 12. And again, using AutoCAD's endpoint and enter. I can get those in there. Now footings I can't change globally like I can columns. So for this I'm going to have to go ahead and change my size. So it's going to look funny being the wrong size footing on those columns for now but at least I get them in there and I don't have to worry about it. So I'm, don't make any mistakes I'll change back to my still here at this point, I'm going to fix my grid back to the way it's supposed to by just copying or pasting back my row value, change my platform value back to zero, hit OK, and there's my grid. And you can see my footings are on top of the grid at the 12 inch height, and my concrete's not passing through the footing. And it's all because I raised that value of that grid and just took advantage of the functionality of the grid. Now at this point, I'm ready to make some, uh, just copy this using AutoCAD's copy command. So I'm just going to grab this, the footings that I have, as well as the columns, and we'll just copy it using AutoCAD's copy command. Because it's just as easy to get it laid out like that, and then come to the top view and erase the ones I don't want to get the L shape that I wanted. So I quickly got all my columns in there the way I want them. So now I'm ready to draw my beams. Again, you can see there's a lot of line work in here. Even the endpoints of these pieces of steel would be easy to hit. So I'm going to utilize the isolate objects to hide all 
still in footings. And then I'm going to manipulate my grid some more. This time I'm going to edit the structure and manipulate it by platform. So I'm going to do a control C of the highlighted platform values for my clipboard and then come back in here with my platform value of 40 feet, which gets just my top. That makes it real easy for me to come in here and just draw these in. And then we'll go ahead and draw the ones across here. And I don't want them going through those beams, so I'll, these I'll or draw in between each bay. So I've got those in there pretty quickly. I'm ready to do my next level. I'm going to isolate those again so they're not in my way as I'm drawing. And then I'm going to manipulate this grid one more time. This time changing the platform value to 25 feet. If I forget what my levels are, they're still showing up over here correctly because I'm only manipulating it on one side and I never copied it over. So I can see I got 25 feet over there change it and you can see everything adjusted and now it's going to be fairly easy and I got to draw between columns this time. I don't want to go through the columns so I'm going to have to change at every point all the way through the end and then we'll go ahead and get these in here real quick and you can see I'm able by using the grid this in this manner I'm able to get through. I'm not having to do a lot of zooming around. I'm able to get all my still in here fairly quickly and fairly easily without having to do any rotating or zooming at all. So at this point I've got everything in. I'm going to go ahead and return my platform values by pasting what was in the clipboard. We'll go ahead and end object isolation to get everything back in. Only thing I have left to do at this point, I'm going to go ahead and freeze the grid so it's easier for you to see what's happened here. And we'll go ahead and move to the front view here. Get all this still. Edit the structure on it. And change this to a W14 or W10 by 54. And now everything's adjusted exactly the way I wanted it. So you can see by using that object isolation and then manipulating that grid on the platforms, all I have now to do is to clean up doing miters and trims and things like that, and my bracing and stuff. But I was able to get the different column sizes in here with the different footings. Everything fairly quickly, I got my basic structure in there in just a matter of minutes, just by manipulating some tools that are in Plant 3D.